So I've added a new operator interface interface um, to provide some abstraction for different types of operator interfaces, uh, keyboard, joysticks, um, Xbox controller, things like that. The goal of this is to make it easier to test um, the robot, even if we don't have the full operator console there, um, or to uh, run a second robot. Um, when the operator console is busy with the, the uh, another robot, um, or to even do some simulation testing where, where driving the robot with the uh, keyboard can be a little awkward, um, and an Xbox controller is a, a lot easier. Um, so this interface here uh, basically supports the, the small set of features that are available in the 3061 lib. So um, focused all around Swerve Drive. So we've got get translate X, get translate Y, um, get rotate. Uh, joysticks, Xbox controllers um, often have their axes uh, different than what we do in terms of our coordinate system um, for FRC. Um, and even the signs different, all of that is handled um, by the specific class that implements the operator interface. Interface, um, So that uh, we don't need to worry about those types of issues elsewhere elsewhere in the code. Um, there's also a couple methods that return um, trigger objects um, related to uh, getting access to different buttons, uh, the field relative button, the reset gyro button, the X dance button. What I like about this is that this will make um, the code as we're gonna see in a moment in robot container a little bit easier to understand um, because we're using, uh, we're referring to uh, the triggers by their purpose um, and not by the um, arbitrary button number. Of course, those numbers are still important, um, but they're now, uh, that responsibility has been uh, encapsulated within the specific um, operator interface class. Um, so as an example, here's a couple different ones. Here's our traditional dual joystick um, operator interface class. Implements operator interface, has a couple of joysticks, all the triggers. Um, this type of code historically was inside of robot container. Now it's been demoted into here and encapsulated in here, which I really like. Um, so this is what I was talking about earlier. The get translate x method actually calls get y and negates it. <laughs> and get translate y calls get x and negates that. Get rotate calls get x, negates that. Um, here's the getting access to the buttons. Um, we are, uh, you know, button three is what we're using for field relative. Um, on the uh, translation joystick, the left joystick historically, um, button three is what we use for reset gyro. On the right joystick, X stance is button one on the left joystick, so on and so forth, but we're using those methods. Um, here's something for the Xbox controller, a single handheld operator interface. Um, again, negating as, as needed, calling the right methods for X and Y and whatnot. Um, on the Xbox controller for Swerve, I'm using the left trigger axis, uh, which is like the other joystick on the Xbox, um, and getting um, using the B button for field relative, the start button for resetting the gyro, and the Y button for the X stance. Doesn't really matter, it's just what I picked. Um, and then there's this OI selector class, um, again, inspired by uh, mechanical advantages code, um, changed around a little bit here. Uh, there's this method, did joysticks change? This runs periodically when the robot is disabled. Um, so as we plug and unplug things, um, it will uh, enumerate that and uh, create and recreate those classes as, as necessary. Um, the find operator interface is what actually creates all the right objects. Um, looking for uh, either up to two joysticks or an Xbox. Um, I had a little trouble with the uh, is Xbox method built into WPI lib. Um, so I'm just, maybe it's just my Xbox controller. I don't know. Um, so I'm just getting a joystick name and seeing if it contains the word Xbox. If it is, I'm calling it an Xbox controller. Um, otherwise, we're looking for things to be the uh, our traditional joysticks. Um, and so it prefers if it finds two joysticks, it's like perfect. Um, it builds the dual joystick operator interface like we use in a competition. If it finds an, otherwise, if it finds an Xbox, fine, we'll use that. Um, of course, it's not unusual for us to have two joysticks and an Xbox controller and a button panel. And so we would we would make this class more sophisticated as, as needed based on a particular year's game. Um, there's some extra warnings here too, just to help you out. If there's no operator interface, there's a warning for that. Um, I also decided it'd be good to have a warning if we don't have our competition operator interface. So that is the uh, two joysticks as well, um, just so that we can see that in Shuffleboard and, and fix that before uh, the match starts. Um, so let me show you a robot container quick and then I'll 
show you what it looks like in the simulator. Um, robot container is nicer now. Um, so go, go up here to the top. Um, we simply make an operator interface object here. Um, just make an anonymous class for now that won't do anything particularly useful. Um, but then um, inside of the constructor, we will invoke um, update operator interface, um, which we'll see if the joysticks changed. Um, if they did not, fine. If they did, we will clear any active buttons on the command scheduler um, before we then recreate new, um, find the new, create a new operator interface object here. Um, and then we reset the default command to you tie it to the new get translate x, y, and rotate methods of the new operator interface, and then reconfigure all the button bindings. Um, I love how the button bindings now looks. Um, so it's oi dot get field relative button toggle on true, so on and so forth. oi get reset gyro button on true, oi get x stance button on true, so and so on. Um, the other thing I changed here too, based on some suggestions on Chief Delphi, was to use the commands class factory methods. Um, so we were familiar with um, doing like new instant command. Um, commands dot run once is a factory method that does the same thing. Um, I think it's a little bit more readable um, and uh, fits fits well. Um, so we can see here we have commands dot either instead of making a new conditional command. Commands dot run once instead of an instant command. Um, command dot um, run once, run once, and I have some other examples here too. Um, command dot sequence for a sequential command group. Uh, commands dot wait seconds. Somewhere here I'll have commands dot deadline for a deadline parallel group. Commands dot run for a, a repeated command. Um, and so on and so forth. So a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but uh, I think it's a nice um, balance here between what um, what we're familiar with and taking advantage of some of these more functional programming perspectives. Um, anyway, so uh, the other thing is just here in robot, there's now a disabled periodic method, which will call that update OI method so that when the robot is disabled, if we plug and unplug things, it all, it all works out. All right, so right now I have this set up to have um, the two keyboards, um, and I'm going to turn on the Xbox controller and make sure that this gets paired up correctly. Um, let's see here. There's the Xbox controller, so I'm going to drop that onto joystick one first. I haven't found a good way to delete these, so I drop it onto joystick one, and then I drop it onto joystick zero, so I end up with just the Xbox controller. I don't know. Maybe there's a better way. Um, but now we have the Xbox controller. We're disabled, so we've already rebuilt our objects. So if I um, enable the robot or, or teleoperated, switch over here to advantage scope, um, I can now drive around. Um, I believe I'm in field relative mode. Yep, so I'm in field relative mode. There we go. Um, and I can use the Xbox controller instead, which is which is great. Um, so I can do all sorts of things now that was challenging to do um, before. So, um, and then I can even test things like uh, X stance. Uh, which button is that? Let's see. Oh, the X button, that makes sense. There's the X button, going into X stance, driving again, back to X stance, so on and so forth. So, pretty cool. Um, hopefully this helps us be even uh, more productive as we're um, using multiple robots or even simulation.